evening. The University honors, now these honors will be formally announced um, and presented during, there's a similar event tomorrow night in the um, Ford Center, um, but we do want to recognize these folks tonight. So when I call your name, um, please stand and remain standing. And everyone, um, please hold your applause and, and we'll uh, do that all at once. But the, the university's highest academic honor is the Marcus Elvis Taylor Medal, which only 1% of Ole Miss's 18,000 undergraduates can receive. And the, the threshold is at least a 3.9 or better GPA. So we're very, very proud of these students. Um, this year, there are four students who will receive Taylor medals. And again, they'll receive them tomorrow night. But when I call your name, um, please stand. Joseph Roberts. for them here tonight. So when I call your name, please come forward to uh, receive your, your own plaque. So um, the first award is for the Graduate Excellence Award in Integrated Marketing Communications. And the recipients, um, there are two, it's Jacqueline Lawton. And Marty Merritt. The Graduate Excellence Award in Journalism goes to Jacqueline Schlick. The Kappa Tau Alpha Journalism Honor Society Graduate Student Top Scholar Award goes to Pepper Taylor. The Kappa Tau Alpha Journalism Honor Society Undergraduate Student Top Scholar Award goes to Elliot Class. The Lambda Sigma Sigma Award in Journalism, and this is for the best journalism student all around, is Abby McIntosh. For the Excellence in Integrated Marketing Communications Award, we have two um, recipients, Hayden Binge. <laughs> and Savannah Woods. And then we have the Excellence in Journalism Award. We have two recipients for that as well. Brady Brown. And the other one is Hayla McKee. GPA minimum and is awarded to seniors who have provided extraordinary leadership and service. Students selected for the who's who are eligible for the University Student Hall of Fame. Now they're going to receive their certificates and plaques separately at a ceremony in the Ford Center on Friday um, and at that time the Hall of Fame will be made public but our students who are selected for this year's who who I'm, I'm going to read the names and um, just just stand and remain standing for, for this one. Um, Hayden Binge, and we'll hold all our applause till, till they're all standing. Hayden Binge, Dee Dee Bose, Brittany Brown, 
Sarah Pellenweyer, Caitlin Campbell, Mary Dillard, Kristen Howitt, Reed Ashton Kevin, Abby McIntosh, Haley McKee, Chauncey Mullins, Ethel Mwedzi Wendera, Slay Brand, Jake Richardson, Davis Roberts, Mackenzie Ross, and Lashrika Thornton. Please join me in recognizing. Next, um, many years ago, there was an endowment created to fund both a scholarship and an award for the person who served as editor-in-chief of the Daily Mississippi Campus newspaper. And this year's very able editor has been Slay Brand. Um, Slay, please come forward and receive your award from Assistant Dean Pat Thompson, who's the director of our Student Media Center, and Dean Will Norton, who leads the School of Journalism and New Media. We now come to the school's Dean's Award. So these are uh, awards within the school. And this is an honor that we have created by our own school faculty and is limited to 10% of the program majors and it's based on scholarship, service, and leadership in our school. Students are nominated by members of the faculty and then the final selections are made by the school's leadership team. So, as your name is called, please come forward and receive your award from Dean Will Norton. And again, if we can hold our applause until they're all finished, we appreciate it. Um, so I'm going to introduce the, the, um, the honorees, and again, come forward to get your um, uh, plaque when I read your name. Adriana Barton. You know, let's clap when I call that. I'm reading the script, but that seemed kind of awkward. So. Uh, next is Olivia Beal. <laughs> Lindsay Brakefield. Landon Chapman. Antoinette Collins. Austin Hill. Alexis Lee. Chancey Mullins.
At this time, we would like to conduct the initiation for the new members of Kappa Tau Alpha um, Journalism Honor Society. And so I would like to have Professor Nancy DuPont, who's the chapter sponsor, come forward and she will present the inductees.
Allison Ann Gusmus. Jack Hall. You've already met me. I'm Nancy DuPont, the advisor to the School of Journalism and New Media's chapter of Capital Alpha. As a member of the National Council of the Society, I have been charged with the duty of giving you the pledge. This society was founded at the University of Missouri in 1910 by a group of men and women who sought to form a bond of union with among students of unusual achievement. The Greek letters, Kavita Alpha, mean the truth will prevail. Also, these same Greek letters suggest three English words, knowledge, truth, accuracy, which indicate the purpose of our society. Our emblem is the key, the oldest symbol of knowledge. The, and the quill on the key symbolizes our method of communicating this knowledge to the people. Our colors are light blue, signifying truth, and gold, signifying worth and high standards. Kappa Alpha is the seventh oldest honor society in the nation. 
National standards will require you to be in the top 10% of your class. At the School of Journalism and New Media, you must be in the top 7% of your class. I ask the fan, uh, I will ask the students and faculty who have been initiated to Capita Alpha to rise or raise you hand and be ready. must be continually, continually be raised. Study and learning are a lifelong obligation. Industry and alertness are the marks of our calling. We must always strive to improve the media. I dedicate myself to the highest ideals of journalism and communication, to the liberty of communication, to honesty, to fairness to all, to skill and artistry, to accuracy, to truth. If you agree, say, I agree. I agree. Congratulations. You are among the elite in journalism and communication scholars.
news reporting class, Journalism 271, and the students turned in their first assignments, and I was all fired up, and I had my pen ready, and I was ready to let the red ink flow, and then I got to her paper, and I went, uh-oh. <laughs> she already knows all the stuff I'm supposed to be teaching. <laughs> um, uh, and you did well in that course. Uh, only two people made these. Uh, you were one of them. <laughs> right there. In 19... <laughs> uh, and both the people that made these went on to, to great careers in, in journalism. Only, only two people in that class. I, I want to tell a few more Emily stories. Uh, one summer, I was her editor at the local paper in Vicksburg, and, and she came in my office, which was, and did something very unhindly like. Uh, and that she said, uh, if you have any more assignments like the one you just sent me on, uh, don't send me. <laughs> uh, and what had happened was, uh, it was summertime, and a church up north had sent a mission team down to, to help the poor and paint their houses and fix their porches and things like that. And what had happened, uh, it was a pretty routine story, uh, Emily got there and they decided to save her soul. Uh, and our soul was in pretty good shape anyway, you know, I thought. But uh, she would say, well, how long are y'all going to be here? And they'd want to hold hands and pray. Uh, and that was fine and everything, and she dealt with it. And she came back and she did the story, but she said, uh, I just would rather not be hospitalized when I go out to do my job. <laughs> and I said, well, that's fine. But what she didn't know then, and she doesn't, didn't know until right now, is that I had just gotten off the phone with the head of the mission trip who had said, please don't send her back. <laughs> about people in journalism is it, we really don't get starstruck. Uh, if we do, uh, we get rid of that pretty easily. We figure out that the rich and the famous and the superstars and the super wealthy, we can just deal with them like normal human beings. We don't fall. Um, Y'all don't know Emily as well as I do. She's a delightful person. She's got a thoroughly delightful sense of humor. But one thing she doesn't do is giggle. She just doesn't giggle. So one day after she had moved on to greater things and was a reporter uh, at the state and national level, uh, I answered my phone there in the office and it was Emily and she was giggling. <laughs> she said, you've got to hear this. Well, Mississippi had a member of Congress named Sonny Montgomery. And for some reason or another, she was doing a profile or something about Sonny Montgomery. And she knew that President Bush and uh, and uh, the first President Bush and Sonny Montgomery, even though they were in different political parties, they were friends. I know in 2019, that's hard to imagine, uh, but it really used to happen. Uh, and so on a lark, Emily had called uh, President Bush and asked, uh, you know, for a comment or a quote about um, Sonny Montgomery. And so Emily played for me a voicemail from the President of the United States. He said, Ah, you know me? <laughs> I can't do a Texas draw. This is George Bush. I'd be happy to talk to you about my friend, Sonny. So anyway, we don't get starstruck, but the one time I heard Emily giggle uh, was uh, when she had a voicemail from a president uh, of the United States, which was a pretty cool thing to get. Um, the third and uh, uh, probably 78, 90 stories, um, maybe 140. Uh, we all know now what Hurricane Katrina was, uh, but we, there was a time when we didn't know what it would be. Uh, that particular summer, uh, there had been uh, 10 named storms, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. Katrina was the 11th. Uh, storm of the summer and it had passed over Florida and it was an okay storm, you know, air to know. And, uh, and that was, we knew it was headed for the Gulf Coast, everybody knew it was headed for the Gulf Coast, but we didn't know 
at midweek uh, what exactly was going to happen. Uh, the storm, as everybody now knows, uh, got over the uh, Gulf Coast uh, and turned into a monster. Or got over the Gulf of Mexico and turned into a monster. Uh, uh, was it New York that sent you? Who sent you to the coast? I went today. I flew the day after. Okay. And, and nobody could get in or out. And you had a change of clothes? Um, no. I'm going to have to edit my own story. <laughs> uh, but, but once the, the magnitude of the worst natural disaster in the history of the country uh, became, or as was becoming apparent, uh, Emily was the voice. Uh, she was the, the person who was telling the outside world uh, pretty much uh, all they could know, uh, all that they could find out about that storm. Um, 238 people uh, killed in Mississippi alone and 67 still missing. Uh, so some days you get voicemails from the president, some days you cover the worst natural disaster in history. Uh, I could go on and on. Uh, but I know many of you have got your DVR set for something. <laughs> but I'll sum it up this way. Emily is a, a journalist, a journalist, a journalist, journalist. Anybody who follows her on social media or who reads her insightful accounts, accurate accounts, notes from the Mississippi legis legis legislature, I caught what you got. <laughs> tremendous work uh, that frequently uh, goes unnoticed because that's the nature of wire service work. You don't, you don't get a whole lot of glory uh, when you're a wire service reporter. You just do a, a lot of work. Uh, of course, Emily is very well respected in the legislature, and we know this because they adjourned a week early so she could be here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Saved us millions and millions. They really did. I mean, they're supposed to be in session this week, but they adjourned last week, and I like uh, Emily has, as I said previously, a delightful sense of humor. Uh, she has the ability to puncture pomposity, and she has an appreciation, which I, I find one of the most endearing qualities uh, in a journalist, is that she has this appreciation of the absurd. Uh, she also has a wonderful family, a, a daughter. Hi, Madeline. How you doing? All right. How am I doing? <laughs> uh, and and uh, to, to be the person who was called on to recognize her here these uh, years <coughs> after she sat in the 271 class is a real treat. So I'll ask our honored dean to come. Oh, Emily, this is a letter you wrote me in 19. Uh, uh, I ask everybody to work for me uh, at the local paper when I was there to send me an evaluation of their experience. Emily did. So here, postmark 14 September 19 is your evaluation. Pardon? Well, you told the truth. That's what you did. <laughs> well, I tell students that if you're in Charlie Mitchell's class, you have to have bottled water because his humor is so dry. <laughs> Sam Calvert Silver M Award 2018 <coughs> Emily Wagster Pets for outstanding contributions to journalism presented in Oxford, Mississippi, April 3rd, 1980. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Morton, and uh, thanks, Charlie. Um, 
trouble coming out. This is, this is cool. And this makes me feel old, to be honest. Um, so I had Charlie's class in 1985. I'll say that. Um, and I'm happy that Charlie didn't fail me on the first assignment. I don't know if he remembers this, but he gave us a current events quiz. One of the questions was, who is the chancellor? The correct answer, of course, was Gerald Turner, the chancellor of the University of Mississippi. I had just spent a year as an exchange student in Germany, so my answer was <laughs> Helmut Kohl. <laughs> um, I, I see Charlie was not going to give me credit for that. And that was the first time I had to talk an editor into something, so thanks for the lesson on that. That, that was very helpful. Um, and I want to um, thank, first of all, my parents. Um, sorry. For not trying to talk me into being a dentist or something that pays better than your <laughs> And for um, letting me know that I could go to college wherever I wanted to, but my tuition money would be right here in Oxford. <laughs> Everett. 
Rita Schwerner Bender, who is the widow of Michael Schwerner, who was one of the three civil rights workers killed in Neshoa County in 1964. Sorry, I covered that trial in 2005. And um, Judge Hopkinner Mulholland, who was a white woman who attended historically black to the college in Jackson in the 60s and became involved in the civil rights movement and was one of the people who helped integrate the lunch counter in at the wars in Jackson, Mississippi. And for being there on that day, she and her friends and colleagues were doused with ketchup, doused with mustard. Um, the men were slammed to the floor. They were called everything but children of Jesus on that day. And they persevered and helped make this state a better place. Um, I had the privilege of interviewing Judge Trump Howard Mahone a few years ago and doing a story on her, and she's really stuck to her principles of truly believing in equality and truly working to make this country a better place. And it's been a great privilege as a journalist to be able to get to know her. And um, Rita Schwerner Bender, as I said, is a widow of Michael Schwerner, who along with James Cheney and Andrew Goodman was, um, they were killed in 1964 in Neshoba County, Mississippi. Um, she could have been the weeping widow who broke down and made it all about herself, and she never did that. She stood up for justice. She confronted the governor of Mississippi at the time and demanded some answers about where her husband was when the bodies had not yet been found. When um, Edgar Ray Killen went to trial in 2005 in the Shelby County, and I covered that gavel to gavel jury selection to sentencing. Um, Rita Schwerner Bender was there with her husband and her now husband and, and their grown children and she was extremely dignified and made sure to talk about the enduring message of, of justice and equality and pushing for civil rights and she did not make it, as I said, did not make it about herself but made it about the greater cause of what makes this country better. Um, Merle Evers Williams, as you know, I don't even need to say this, is the widow of Edgar Evers, who was killed outside his home in Jackson in 1963, which was three years before I was born. Um, and she, her daughter at the time was a very small child, but they were all home when this happened. And what that family has been through is horrific, but they've maintained a sense of dignity and, sorry, they made this a better place. And, um, I'm so sorry. The thing, the great thing about journalists is because you can tell these stories, you can meet these people, and um, a lot of them are still alive who, who went through a lot of terrible things back then. And um, talk to your parents, talk to your grandparents. Don't let these stories go. Really go out and find them. I mean, you know, everyone has an iPhone now. Record them, do those interviews, um, get that information, tell those stories. And so, thank you. Just a few more <laughs> words. Uh, we have not introduced Lane Bruce. He came all the way up here from Jackson to see this ceremony. Lane? Where are you? <laughs> he cut out. <laughs> I'm sorry to introduce him. <laughs> uh, Emily didn't tell you, her dad was the FBI, was an FBI agent in Jackson. Just when I was leaving Ole Miss, uh, he came up here to be the golf coach. I had been at Ole Miss 15 years when Emily graduated, so uh, Charlie sang mm -mm -mm. I could go farther than mm -mm -mm in that <laughs> time. Uh, one of the ancient Hebrews writers urged young people to remember the values on which they were raised so that when they became older, they would not have regrets for their lack of stewardship of their talent. 
Tonight we have honored an accomplished journalist, a, form, a graduate of this, of this school, a member of the Honors College, who has lived by the values with which she was raised and has been a good steward of her immense talents. And tonight we've also honored some of you and you're just beginning to be stewards of your talents. We hope decades from now, you'll be back here and we can honor you in the same way. We're grateful that you understand, as one person said, the principle that whoever works his or her hand, her land will have plenty of bread. But he or she who follows worthless pursuits lacks any sense. Thank you all for coming tonight. Have a great decade ahead of you of good stewardship.